Hey there, Dale here with Pacific Sun Technologies. So I previously took apart a Solar Edge optimizer because I wanted to see the guts of that optimizer. But I really wanted to know more about what's going on on the roof and what's inside these devices. So I'm now going to take apart an N-phase microinverter. Now this is an older one, it's an M215, and I got it right here. So I'm pretty excited to take this apart. But before I dive in, please be sure to subscribe to the channel by hitting that button down below because while this is an older N-Phase microinverter, I do plan on taking apart one of their IQ7. So be sure to subscribe to the channel so you can check out what's available today. And if you're someone interested in getting a quote, visit us online at pacificsuntech.com. We have some great promotions going on. Of course, we're an Enphase partner, so we obviously offer their microinverters. But now you actually get to see what's inside of them before you get them installed on your home. All right, so I've never really taken apart, just like that optimizer, a microinverter. So I got an iFixit kit. I absolutely love my iFixit kit. And we're, of course, not sponsored by iFixit or Enphase in that regards for this video. We just like to do these things on our own. So I do have my toolkit as well. I have a heat gun and I you know, have my little handy dandy tool thing. So I'm going to kind of start with my iFixit kit, try and figure out what size these screws are. They look to be a T3. Solar Edge, there, there was like no screws. It was, it took me a while to figure out how to really open it up, but uh, this is pretty clear. Now, one thing that's really changed from the old microinverters to today's microinverters is obviously the solar panel plugs in right here. These are MC4 connections but the trunk cabling has changed. So Enphase doesn't use this bulky trunk cable. You can see there's four wire connections in here. So you have your hots, red and black, and then you have neutral and you had ground. So these were things that we had to have back in the day. We don't need them anymore with Enphase's new trunk cabling for the IQ. We just have hot, so we just have red and black. And then we have our ground that we bring down. We don't need neutral for the microinverters up on the roof. Really nice. I don't think I see anything else that really stands out. Let's see if I can remove the plate. So no, the plate doesn't appear to just pop off. Now, mind you, this is a defective one. So we ended up with this. We get a lot of them um, from Enphase's upgrade program. So if you're a customer that has older microinverters, some of their legacy microinverters, older ones than this M215, then you're eligible to contact Enphase and upgrade your system to new IQ microinverters. So it's pretty cool. And this is of course one of these microinverters. So I'm guessing this has some glue. So I'm gonna heat up the metal. I'm gonna get a little pry tool out that I have and then uh, see if we can't pry it open. That's hot. Okay, let's put on <laughs> some gloves because that stuff is toasty. So yeah, it doesn't. Now mind you, these are rated to be outside, so I didn't expect it to be super easy to get into, but you know, you just never know until you get into it. There's gotta be something. Now, for all I know, Enphase could do the same thing that Solar Edge does and basically fill the whole thing up with uh, rubber to make it have a its outdoor rating. It doesn't feel like there's a screw under that. So maybe we're missing something on this side. Maybe there's some hidden screws under the ratings label. Kind of feeling around. See, and I can already tell this is rubber. Or no, no, that's the light. So that's the light indicator. So you know if it's working. So if you had an in-phase system and it wasn't mapped out and you needed to find a microinverter 
that had gone bad, that's we would look for these lights. It was um, Enphase has really thought about a lot of things over the years, um, and and made it really easy. So I'm guessing this plate goes on when there's rubber in here, because I'm, I'm I would imagine this is the fill hole. So. What we're probably going to see is much like what we saw with a solar edge and that the inside is just one giant block of rubber and it's going to be a little disappointing but I still want to get into it and I want to find out for sure. So we're just going to keep heating this up. So while I'm heating this up so I can keep prying, I want to talk about in-phase microinverters and the advantages they have over So while I'm heating this up, I thought I'd take the opportunity to kind of talk about the advantages microinverters have over other types of technology that's come onto the market over the years. You know, Enphase's biggest competitor is SolarEdge, and SolarEdge obviously uses optimizers and maintains a central inverter. Now there are advantages to some of SolarEdge's approaches with their technology, specifically when you're looking at batteries, or an EV charger because they do have their new energy hub inverter which uses Prisma technology and basically you get DC to DC power. So if you have an EV vehicle, obviously it has a battery, that's DC energy. So instead of converting AC to DC, you just take your straight raw solar power and which is DC and put it straight into the batteries through the EV charger. Now that's pretty cool. Um, but besides that, you know, Enphase has a unique advantage in the market because it's less components. With a solar edge system, you have your optimizer and then you have your inverter. So while you do get the same module level monitoring and performance enhancements like shade optimization, you are still dealing with a central inverter, much like old string inverters. I mean, it is a lot better than string inverters back in the day. And, um, you know, that's, if you're not familiar with what a string inverter is, I definitely recommend checking out our recent video on the Tesla solar inverter, because Tesla's coming out with a solar inverter, though it doesn't look to, at this time, to have optimizers. So I definitely recommend checking out that video. And um, you'll at least have a better understanding of the advantages optimizers and microinverters have over a string inverter that doesn't have that type of technology for the module level enhancement. You know, 10 years ago, you know, I can already see, there's, you can kind of see as I'm peeling this up, that is definitely glued to it. So I'm gonna keep heating it up and slowly pull it away. It makes sense why there's not too many of these videos out there, but you don't know how it's made until you start trying to take it apart. So there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, you just want to know how good of a product it is. I mean, Enphase has been offering a 25 year warranty on their microinverters almost from the beginning. And yeah, that's, they definitely stand true to that. Obviously they've created their upgrade program and that's really beneficial for customers that are experiencing inconsistencies with some of their legacy microinverters. This isn't a legacy. An M series is like one generation newer than the legacy ones or two generations newer. So and they haven't really changed much of this. I mean the plugs have a little bit and the shape. They don't use metal anymore on the new ones. You'll see if you subscribe to the channel when I take apart an IQ or at least attempt to. I don't even know if we're going to be able to get into this. Now with Solar Edge, you get a standard 12 year inverter warranty and then a 25 year optimizer warranty, which I feel is interesting because I know Solar Edge could easily do a standard 25 year warranty. Um, I, I don't know why they don't, to be honest. It really doesn't make any sense. So if you see, I don't see anything in there that looks like tabs. I mean, I'll, I'll try. I've been heating this up a while. Let me just hold on. 
least with the optimizer, I was able to get it open relatively fast-ish, I guess. It's cool. I mean, it makes sense. It, it's up on your roof. It's under a solar panel. It's exposed to the elements. You have a lot of electronics in here. Now I can't tell if the glue is going all the way across or not. Anyways, Enphase isn't the only microinverter manufacturer. There's actually like AP Systems and Chilliken. We've talked to them. I've checked them out. AP Systems seems to be more in commercial projects because they have a microinverter that you can connect multiple panels to. So you're not getting module level monitoring, you're getting like grouped module monitoring, um, which is cool. It's just different, you know. I, I We've seen residential projects with all sorts of different microinverters. There's been a lot over the years that have come and gone. and But Enphase has definitely continued to dominate the market and um, we expect them to continue on this path, especially with the new IQ8s that are expected to come out later this year, at least we're hoping. The IQ8 microinverters are the next generation because they're supposed to allow for backup. You know, that's what's built into their new N charge batteries are these special IQ8 microinverters and they haven't released them yet for solar panels because the batteries are taking priority. But one of the struggles and phase and many manufacturers in the solar industry are facing right now are shortages of materials and resources and just manufacturing itself because of the pandemic. So you know, there is expected inventory shortages to occur across the industry from everybody. It's important to note that. So if you're looking to go solar, I would highly recommend you consider doing it now rather than waiting three months or six months. And it really has to do with these manufacturers and the backlogs they have. You know, there's these guys are global, you know, all manufacturers in the solar industry, they're dealing with stuff globally. So if they're having global, ooh, we're starting to make way, shortages or issues, that's, it's going to affect the entire industry across the United States and globally, and thus causing prices to go up. Now, Enphase over the years has partnered with a lot of various solar panel manufacturers to create AC, I'm putting that in air quotes, AC solar panels. And I honestly, I'm not a big fan of them. It's a real pain in the butt for installers because of the cable management method. Because basically all they're doing is creating this bracket that gets glued onto the back of a panel and then the microinverter sits in the bracket. It's, it's not really integrated into it. It's kind of just glued to it. It's, it's pretty stupid. I'd much rather have the microinverter attached to the racking, which this is for, so you just put your optimizer bolt right there and it grounds it to the racking, than it being attached to the panel because it just, it isn't easier. And then the panels, they're, they're cabling. All of them come at like 1.3 meters. So you have this long cable and you got a cable management. You don't want wires hanging off the roof. So if you see someone and they're offering you an AC module, it's, it's no better than just getting a panel and a microinverter separately. I mean, it's an AC module. You know, it, the only difference is that it, a solar module from a manufacturer went to like an end phase facility and had a microinverter glued to it instead. Um, <laughs> but that's about it. Okay, so here we go. Oh, wow. Yes, we have gotten into it like I thought there was going to be a lot of rubber because it's a uh, NEMA 4X rated. So, I mean, this thing's pretty, pretty intense. You can see that the, the amount of rubber that's in here. So this is the bracket, did a lot of bending on it, as you can see. So I'm not gonna do too much digging into this because I tried doing that with, with the Solar Edge one and it, it's just, this one's even older than that Solar Edge one. But you can see it's it's filled up with rubber, so that's what this hole's for. 
as you can see, that's where it kind of comes in. So yeah. So through the manufacturing process, they assemble everything, they put this on, and you know that's what that little one was. So that's probably the air gap to let air out. So they're filling it up, air's coming out over here, they put a little seal on it, they put a little seal on it. There you go, the whole thing is covered in rubber. So that's pretty much it. I mean, I can see, it looks like there's a capacitor over here. I mean, it's going to be bigger than an optimizer. It's got more components. It's converting DC power to AC power. So that's pretty important, you know? It's interesting that the amount of rubber, I'm curious on like, Obviously we have their efficiency rating, we know, but it's, it's really interesting to think like that. This is, this works, you know, because if you look at a standard solar inverter, it's not full of rubber and it's outdoor rated. Mind you, it's not typically NEMA 4X, but rather NEMA 3R, but still, it's, it's one of those things. There you go. That's an in-phase microinverter, older, but nonetheless, it's still an in-phase microinverter. Well, that's it for this week's video. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to the channel so that way you can see me take apart an IQ7 microinverter. Maybe they figured out a better way to create a watertight seal without filling it up with rubber. I don't know, but you're gonna wanna check it out because if you get a bid from us, you're going to get those in your proposal. We offer the IQ7, the IQ7 Plus, the IQ7X, and the IQ7A, which is the newest one for high wattage modules like the Solaria Power XT400. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Until next time.